Today we're looking at another fine, fine product. It is the K678 condenser microphone. We're going to be taking a look at the sound quality of the microphone and also doing a side-by-side -side comparison with two much more expensive microphones in my studio. Here's an audio test of the fine, fine K678 uh, USB condenser microphone. I've got my room set up right now with uh, no air conditioning is on in the studio. I've got all the doors closed, so this should be kind of an ideal low noise environment to record in. The mic is currently 30 inches in front of me. It's about an arm's length away right on my desk, and I'm recording straight into Audacity with no processing. I do have the headphones connected, and what I'm impressed with is that, as expected, there is no latency whatsoever. Uh, so it's not going to trip you up when you're trying to speak. If you are monitoring yourself and there's a delay, it can be really, really disorienting and hard to speak right. Um, so this does not have that problem. And uh, yeah, overall it's sounding okay. I'm definitely hearing a lot more of the room than I would like to, but it's not bad if this is what you're using for video conferencing. It's totally fine in this configuration. However, I'd like to bring it in closer and see if the sound quality improves. For the second test, I have moved the microphone to half the distance it was away from my mouth, so it's gone down from 30 inches to 15 inches now. And that is sounding, one, considerably better and also louder, so I'm going to reduce the volume on the back of the microphone. Let's see how that looks. Is that down or up? Ah, uh, that way's down, okay. Yeah, I got that kind of backwards. So let's set that up so that as I'm speaking, it's staying around minus 12, minus 9 decibels. That's looking like a nice, healthy level. Um, so yeah, this is how it sounds a little closer. I am much happier with the sound of this. The low-end response is much more natural sounding. It's not as thin as it was from further away. And also, of course, because the mic is closer, I was able to reduce the volume, which reduces the volume of the ambient noise in the room. So the little bit of hum that there is from traffic outside, from wind and things like that, is significantly reduced, as is the echo in the room. So for my last test, I'm going to bring it right up close, how I would do it for you know a voiceover or for a singer or something like that, and we'll see how that sounds in what I would hope is a best case scenario. Here is test number three. This is very close, and once again, it is too loud. However, the tone has improved dramatically. So let me turn the mic down again. And once again, I'm going to set it up so that the level is around minus 9 to minus 12 dB while I'm speaking. And yeah, this is far, far better than it was in either of the previous two tests. So as expected, it is a condenser microphone, um, a larger diaphragm condenser at that, and they are extremely sensitive, uh, which means you get great clarity in your voice when you're up close. However, you also pick up a lot of ambient noise that you probably don't want in the recordings. So do keep that in mind. This is not a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones will be much more forgiving. This one, you have to take some time to set it up right. Ideally, you'd be in a room like this that has some acoustic treatment. You can see I've got the foam up on the walls there. Um, that's how you're going to get the most out of this microphone because it will pick up the reverb in your room. It will pick up noises coming in from the outside. Even if they're hard for you to hear, these things are incredibly sensitive and they will pick up background noise. So be reasonable with it. Have reasonable expectations. Understand that you will need to put some work into it in order to get the most out of it. But if you're willing to, you will get significantly better quality than you might expect. All right, now it's time for the obligatory microphone roundup. In front of me, I've got three large diaphragm condenser microphones. Starting from the left is the MXL992. This guy cost about 200 bucks brand new. Uh, I got it when they were going out of production. I paid 80 bucks for this one. The mic in the middle here is an Audio-Technica 4033A. This guy sells for about 400 bucks, and this is my go-to vocal and voiceover microphone. And finally, finishing us off at something ridiculously cheap is the fine fine k678 it's probably not as good as the other ones but i bet it's impressive so the things that i look for in a good vocal microphone um i want it to sound natural and lifelike i don't want it to be too overly hyped i think a little bit of uh, accentuation in the high frequencies is not a bad thing if it helps with clarity however when it gets to the point with a microphone like this where it's just it's, it tries to make you sound like a radio broadcaster almost. That's not always what you want, and it can be hard to get rid of that sound. That is why I love the 4033A, because it has a very natural and smooth frequency response. It doesn't go too crazy in the lows or the highs. It just kind of sounds like I do in real life. And finally, here is the fine fine again. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, so I don't know what it sounds like, but I guess we'll find out together.
And finally finishing us off at something ridiculously... What? That's a $68 microphone, and that sounds dang near as good as my $400 Audio-Technica. What is going on here? Okay, so obviously there's a lot more going on than just the sound quality. You got the build quality of the microphones. You've got the feature set. This is USB, this is XLR. We got a professional quality microphone meant for being in a studio like this one versus this fine fine, which is much more at home on a independent content creator's desk, like a YouTuber, a small podcaster, things like that. So what are you giving up when you go for a $68 mic over a $400 mic? Well, you got build quality. This is all metal. I mean, that's also all metal. Um, you're giving up some features. So this one can go into different types of equipment like preamps or equalizers. This one has a headphone jack and volume controls and a mute button and can plug into your phone and record. Um, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Okay, to be totally honest though, there are some important differences. When you get into professional grade audio, there are certain standards that you want to adhere to. There's certain ways of working that just work better in a professional environment. And that's one of the things where having an XLR interface really is important. Because if you're doing something with a multi-channel audio system, for example, you are not able to plug in more than one of these to a computer. There's some software tools you can use to kind of get around that, but it's not meant for it. And that is very clear as a part of its design. This is meant for one person to use. This is good for hundreds if you have a mixing board that can handle that. So what I recommend it for podcasting, if you're an individual who is just doing something by yourself and maybe you have guests call in via Zoom or, or a phone call, this would be an awesome choice. It sounds really good. And they're not paying me to say this. This is my own opinion. And I'm honestly shocked that I'm saying it, comparing it to, again, a $400 professional grade condenser microphone. I'm astounded that I'm saying this, but that's a really nice sounding mic, that fine, fine. So yeah, I would say if you're an individual, if you're a smaller you know, production, it's an awesome starting point. Um, I know there's other mics out there from Blue and from other companies like that. And I've used those and not been that impressed. I am actually genuinely blown away by the fine fine. So I'd say start there. And then, you know, over the years, once you find out more of your sound, buy a microphone that's better suited to your voice. One of the reasons I ended up with an Audio Technica is because with the voice that I have, it just works well with it. It doesn't sound great for everyone. For the most part, uh, female singers sound better through the MXL than they do through this one because the low frequency issues with the MXL don't exist. And this one has maybe slightly more more forgiving high frequency sounds to it. So there's pros and cons with everything. Price tag is not the only factor. There's a lot that goes into what makes a mic good or bad for a certain situation. And uh, don't let it come down to just price and reviews. However, as a starting point, as a general microphone that can do a lot of stuff pretty well, if you don't need XLR, if you don't need multiple mics in one system, that fine find is a really good starting point. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this video educational and informative. As always, I do appreciate all of your likes and comments and subscriptions and all that good stuff. So please click the appropriate buttons depending on how you feel about this video. Like is great, dislike works as well. Although please don't dislike it because I like likes better. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.